Hello everyone, my name is Micah, and in this video I want to swatch some new inks with you and share with you my May Currently Inked, which is quite exciting because one, I have some ink companies that I haven't tried before, and two, because I was traveling and moving, I haven't changed my inks in about three months, uh, so this is quite exciting for me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna share with you um, what I picked out for May. And then also, look at this cute box. Um, I found this at TJ Maxx in Germany and I couldn't resist. And so I decided to turn this into my fountain pen storage for, for my desk. So when I'm at home, this is where they're gonna live. And so I can just easily open up the box and pick out the pen that I wanna use. Uh, I'm probably gonna line it with something soft so that they're a little bit more protected um, and not quite so like wobbling around. But yeah, isn't that so cute? Cute and functional. Um, let me know how you store your fountain pens when you're at home. Do you still keep them in a pen case or do you have something to have them out on your desk? Let me know, I'm curious. But yeah, this is what I decided to do. And so, Onto the swatching. I have here a Midori B6 Slim notebook that I want to dedicate to my currently inks or currently ink lists, however you want to call that. So that one, and then I also want to make some swatch cards. I cut these out of um, Midori paper because that's mostly what I use for journaling. So I figured use, use for swatching what you use for writing, right? Because then they look the same. Anyways, um, so let's do these big ones first because then you can actually see, right? Um, kind of fun. I ordered some, for the first time, I ordered some inks from Yoseka Stationery in New York. Uh, I love their shop, uh, but I've just never, I've always, Order the ink samples somewhere else. But um, yeah, these are really fun, I think, because they come in these little glass bottles. And uh, once you have 10 of these, they send you a shipping label and a box, I think, um, to return these. And then they recycle the glass bottles, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, let's get into some inks. This is a lot of talking and no inks. Okay, so first up is an, an ink company that I haven't tried before. It's uh, Kobe Ink, uh, and this one is number 56, and it's called uh, Roko Shichidanka. That's probably way off, <laughs> but it's a type of hydrangea, a, I think a mountain hydrangea. And so this ink is sort of a purple blue, I would say. It's really, really pretty. Maybe we can zoom you in a little bit. And this is the first time I tried a purple ink and I quite love it. It has some like pinkish undertones too. It's quite pretty. I mean, it's definitely hydrangea looking, <laughs> if that's the thing. Um, yeah, really, really pretty. Look at that. You see like the mix of blue and purple, quite pretty. And I have that inked up in my cute little Kaweco Sport in the, I think it's grapefruit color. So this is, do people say the Nagasawa in front of the Kobe ink or do people typically just refer to it as Kobe ink? Well, we'll be correct and just, Naga. So, Kobe. 
Um, I have had this in this fountain pen for a couple days and it's uh, working really well so far. I've, I've been picking this up because it just um, flows so nicely and it's so readable. So I'm quite enjoying this. Oh, that just barely fits, doesn't it? Okay, we're putting that off to the side somewhere, like maybe here. Um, I do think this time around, um, all the ings go together really well. Like the palette in and of itself is really pretty. That's one thing um, I noticed with my inks that I had previously, the lineup, it just got really brown heavy and so some of the inks looked really similar and so I don't know there's something about having even the inks in and of themselves form a palette not that that's necessary and I might play around with that and um, yeah just see um, how that all develops the more I use uh, fountain pens and get acquainted with what I like in inks. Writing and talking together is really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, and so far I've been really also enjoying this pen again. Um, there was a time where it would give me heart starts and stuff like that, but then I cleaned out the tines. Um, and I think I fixed it. Yay! <laughs> I'm really proud of myself for that. Okay, next up is another Kobe ink. Um, this one is um, Kobe number 44, which is the uh, Sumaura Seaside Blue. Um, so it's um, apparently inspired by Suma Creek, which is a popular summer spot. And so this is um, a, well, a sort of like teal, blue, green, um, sort of like natural occurring water, I suppose, like in the lake or something. Yeah, it's really pretty. This is the kind of I'm not typically a blue person, but if blue, then this kind of blue I really like with sort of like the green undertone, definitely like a warm, um, warm blue. Yeah. I'll show you. Close up. Really pretty. Um, on one ink website, I read that this also has some very slight red sheen to it. I haven't seen that so far, but um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe it shows up at some point. And I have that inked in a Twisby Eco in purple. Um, this one I won from a giveaway by Simone. Um, so fun. Um, and these have been such trusty writers, especially um, traveling um, with it. Yeah, they just never give me heart starts or anything. Um, so. Oh, I forgot to put the number on my um, other swatch there. Have you tried the Kobe ink before? What's your opinion of them? Is there any color I should try? The one thing I will say is that I found that I think I might not like how thin um, the grip section is on the Twisbees. 
which is kind of sad because they are such reliable writers for that price, especially. I mean, I've never had any issues with the fountain pen itself or how it distributes ink. It's just, yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. Oh, and then I'll fill this in really quick. Well, that layout is not quite working, is it? I'm leaving myself so much space here and then running out of it over there. But, oh well, it is it is a log. It doesn't have to, I mean, I like it to be pretty, but. And then another new ink company that I tried is Lennon Toolbar. And I picked out the color Firmament, which is um, from their line it's called a uh, atmospheric colors. I think they're all waterproof. Well, and this one is, I haven't tried that yet, by the way, maybe I should um, do a little test there. But um, yeah, they're all a little like muted, the colors and waterproof. So really, really fun. And um, this firmament color in particular is, um, an interpretation of the dusty hue of the heavenly skies, which is interesting because it's very, very green. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know what kind of skies they're seeing there, but um, it is a very, very pretty color. And it goes on really rich like that. Um, even in writing, it comes out quite um, saturated and dark, but then it, when it, once it dries, it dries to this more muted, almost chalky, chalky green. Um, here you see it happening. Is that crazy? Look at that. It shifts so much, but I still like the color it dries to. I think that's always <laughs> a thing, you know, that obviously is um, or can be quite a disappointment, I suppose, um, when something shifts color so much and then you don't like the color it shifts to. <laughs> um, so this is um, in a Twisby with a medium nib and just flows really, really well. Um, I've been picking this up constantly. I just love this color so much. And it seems to be working great in the Twisby. Okay, and then load that in here. Quite fun. And then another new color that I had actually ordered before I went um, on my trip to Germany was this um, Wearing Gold New Hope crown. Again, Wearing Gold never tried them before, but um, on my quest to find a really nice uh, seafoam green color. Uh, this came up, and I thought I'd give it a give it a try. And it is a very gorgeous, yeah, sea foam or sea glass, um, minty blue green. Um, I've had it in one of my pens for a couple days now, and I'm still on the fence whether or not it's too minty and whether or not it's too light. But what I like about it is, though it is minty, it also, I, I hope you can see that on camera, it has some yellow undertone, so it's quite warm. I bet there's some yellow pigments in this. Um, so quite pretty. I have that inked up in my blue green safari, because that's fitting. 
So this has a, a medium nib. So this would obviously also be a lot harder to uh, read in a fine nib, which I prefer medium uh, nibs. It's just that um, I've realized that in the, for example, in the Hobonichi five weeks, um, the grid where I use my fountain pens a lot, the grid is so small that I, I do need uh, a couple more fine nibs in my lineup, I think. And leaning towards smaller, uh, smaller journals in general, um, I think it would be beneficial for me to have a couple more fine nibs. Do you base your nib sizes, like have you ever made that kind of decision where you realize, oh well I tend to work in smaller journals so maybe I should um, have a couple more finer nibs or I like the A5 so why not go with a broader nib? Is that something you ever considered? Um, let me know, I'm curious. And then because I was feeling like the the palette is is going a lot into the blues and greens, I wanted something to balance all of that out. And so I decided to use an ink that I've been using for the past three months. It's the only reoccurring ink, I guess. <laughs> um, and that is Robert Oster Australis Rose. I've been really enjoying this pink. It's sort of a dusky pink. Um, with a bit of little bit of shading, um, and it's just the I found that the Robert Oster inks are so reliable, um, and I thought that this sort of created a really pretty, uh, almost like a Monet kind of palette, <laughs> um, and again maybe a little bit too much blue greens in there, but overall just so pretty all together I thought. Um, really soft um, and pastel y but still readable. Um, I did put the Australis Rose in a pen that I haven't had it in before, um, and that is my uh, Jin Hao X159. Um, and I've come to realize that I think the nib, it stops a little if that makes sense. Like it feels as if there's a coating on there, as if there was some like glue stuck on there, even though it is not. I mean, I've cleaned this out and everything. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you have a Jin Hao, have you uh, had a similar experience? Because other than that, it's pr super reliable. Like it never gives me a heart starts or seems to be drying out. Um, I do like how chunky it is. I like the big nib. So yeah, I don't know. Um, Cause this ink was super wet and juicy in the Caveco. So I'm thinking that it's not the ink that is causing that sort of little bit of friction. I guess, That's best I can describe it. So yeah, there it is. Um, I think it's quite pretty together. Um, and I'm gonna yeah, play around with just how much I do or don't wanna create sort of palettes um, versus just trying inks out or just having a variety of colors rather than them going together. Um, but you know, it's quite fun to play around with that. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you have any thoughts on these inks or if you have any experience with them, um, it's always fun to talk about that stuff. Oh, and I should probably mention, I do also have um, my Pilot Custom Heritage um, 912 and my uh, Pilot uh, Namiki Falcon. Um, these I use for drawing, so this one is permanently inked with Diatramentus document brown, so a waterproof brown, 
and then this has a Roran Klingner sketch ink in black in it. Um, so uh, these don't really change, but they are still in um, almost daily use, and I love them. Um, they're my they're my favorites actually. Um, so yeah, and oh, and then also something that um, Simona has been talking about a lot, um, which is so fascinating to think about. She has been really looking into um, like what do, do I like the bigger nibs? What what about grip section? The girth of a pen, and I've been really interested in that too. Um, seeing how I think maybe the twisties are just a little too thin. And then something else I've, and this one has a really big nib and I love it. Um, it's a soft, fine, medium nib. Oh, the camera won't focus. Um, but then I think for me, it might also have something to do with weight. I've realized that with the um, cheaper fountain pens, I tend to press more. <laughs> um, and so I get a little uh, hand fatigue because of that. So. Um, yeah, I do want to play around with nib size and weight of fountain pens. Um, that's something to, um, that I want to explore more and be more mindful of while I use my fountain pens to figure out what I do or don't like. But yeah, um, I hope this video wasn't too all over the place, but um, I get so excited about colors and fountain pens and there's so much to explore and I, I hope you just enjoyed the chat and I was able to uh, provide some company while you maybe journal or uh, wash dishes or whatever. Um, I definitely thank you for sharing this time with me and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, happy journaling!